It is wow. just you, Nakia. <laughs> wow. Well, hello. Now, of course, she was uh, the yellow Power Ranger. We have a Power Ranger in the audience as well. I see. We have the Green Ranger. Wait, hello. can you stand up? Because that, that is an absolutely awesome costume. Yes. Let's give a hand to That is an absolute great costume. Nakia, run from right here in Stockton, California. Yes. What is it like to have Stockton Con here in Stockton? We've been trying to work this out for the past couple of years with me getting here, and it's just such an honor to finally be back here. I've, I've caught up with some old childhood friends, one over there that I went to school with, a couple that came to my table. Um, it's, um, it's been such a blessing, because I haven't seen some of my friends and some of the people that I've grown up with in so long. Um, I do come back a couple of times a year because all of my family's here. But um, it's an honor. It's an honor. And this is a, an awesome con. There's a lot of people. He's really built this up a lot. So thank you guys for coming to the panel. Woo -woo! I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Now, now, you, now you are very talented. You, you, can, you can obviously act. You can write. You can sing. You can dance. Had a pop album. Divine. Yes. Um, and, and, we, and, we, and we won't have you sing, you know, the album. Um, so, Great, you know. Because I can't remember anything in it. But thank you. Yes. I also wrote a couple comedy pilots as well. So, um, what I thought was, was really interesting when I was uh, doing some research on you was how people come up to you and say, hey, Power Rangers changed my life. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and how fans come up to you and say, hey, it was really an effective show and it really said something to me. You know, no one could have told me when I did the show 26 years ago that, um, first of all, that I would be doing Comic-Cons around the world and that I would be able to have the, the honor of meeting some of the fans that have watched since they were little. I was on the show 27 years ago. That kind of gives away my age, doesn't it? But that's okay. You're 30, right? Uh, yes, yes, we'll go with that. Um, but, you know, I it's, it's such a, a treat for people to come to my table and say that... Um, Power Rangers encourage them to take up martial arts, to stand up to their bullies in high school and in you know elementary school. Um, that they would see uh, someone brown that looked like them on television, it inspired them and encouraged them that they could they could you know do great things in life. I mean that is that's huge. Like I would have never thought when I was filming Power Rangers that it would come full circle like this. That I would be able to come back to my hometown and be able to see all these beautiful faces and be able to talk about you know, growing up here and being on the show and the, the things that I've done since then. So it's, it's just been great. And also, you, you've mentioned other interviews about being a powerful black woman on television and, and how important that is, you know, in, in the media landscape. Yeah. Um, I think it's so important that um, each of us, black, white, green, purple, red, get a chance to see someone that looks like them on television because when you see it, it becomes more of a reality. And um, to be able to be that for someone is an absolute honor. And, and one thing, uh, when I was looking into what you did post Power Rangers, is that you were a substitute teacher in the inner city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And one of the stories that I read about you was the fact that you took these inner city kids all around Los Angeles. They had never been to the beach, they had never been to Beverly Hills, and, and that really inspired you. Yeah. So. After Power Rangers, um, I went on to do other other series and other shows and things, but it was nothing consistent, so my mom had suggested, my mama said, she was like, well, you have your degree, why don't you substitute teach? That'll allow you to have the opportunity to still audition and, you know, still get paid, whatever. And so I start falling in love with some of the students that I, that I was teaching, and then I started a nonprofit called A Day in the Life, where it would give... Um, kids an opportunity to live a day in a life of whatever profession. So we would study, um, so say one month we would study chef, the food industry. So then it, every week we would do something along the food industry. And then at the end of the month, we, I would give, uh, we would take a field trip to like a restaurant and they would be chefs. Um, my husband and I own a set company. So we, we study the entertainment industry and, and different things, because there's so many jobs in the entertainment industry outside of being an actor, a producer, and all of that. There's art designers, there's set construction. I mean, there's money to be made. And so I wanted to introduce the kids to that. They came to our set company, they built sets, and, and, um, and that. And so, yeah, 
so I think I answered your question. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, absolutely. You know, I just thought that was a great story of, you know, taking taking students to places they hadn't been and, you know, giving them a new experience. Yeah, yeah. And also, of course, they went to your alma mater, UCLA. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. And, and, ha and do you know if any of them actually went to UCLA? You know what? It's funny. Some of the some of the kids that I taught back then, they'll contact me on Instagram and they'll um, tell me where they are. Some of them have gone on. To, to do great things. Some of them have moved away. Um, some of them will keep in contact with me just to see how I'm doing, which is which is really, really cool. Um, I was almost gonna stop acting, actually, and just teach because I had, um, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease called sarcoidosis. And um, before that had happened, I didn't know, it was either, the doctor said it was either lymphoma or sarcoidosis, and lymphoma hadn't hit my mind that it was a cancer, I was just like, oh, hmm, what is lymphoma? Anyway, it ended up being sarcoidosis, so I was on so many different medications that I didn't even look like myself. So I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna become a teacher, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop acting, um, but I just couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't, I ended up going into remission, I've been in remission for almost 10 years, thank God, thank you, thank you. Um, and so then I, you know, I had prayed specifically because people that know me know that I'm, I'm a prayer warrior, so I always pray about everything. So I prayed specifically to the Lord. I was like, Lord, if you want me back in the business, please, I need this to happen, that to happen, and this happened, and that happened. And I ended up booking a lead role in a movie, and I went to Austin and filmed it. And so that brought me back into the industry, and I've been in it ever since. I'd love to hear if they have any questions for me. So Absolutely, yeah. Up? Absolutely, open up to questions. Yes, in the front row. Um, well, I want to say welcome back to the stock. Thank you. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. I wanted to give your, um, I wanted your, I wanted your uh, take on the Mighty Morphin through the series and how it progressed Mighty Morphin all the way to the new Power Rangers. Do you, have, do you ever see the new Power Rangers season uh, come out, or do you just like focus on what you're doing right now and be an obstacle for new teenagers because you either are, you know, some don't have that, you know, where if you're struggling with school and you're like, you know, I know you're big into committee, but the school, are you like following what Power Rangers are doing now, or do you like try and keep up with what you're doing now? Um, the question was, do I follow the current Power Rangers series and so forth? To be perfectly honest, I stopped watching Power Rangers when I left the show. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> but because some of my friends have come come back, Catherine, who played the Pink Ranger, she's like my sister. She came back for an anniversary episode, and my friend Jason Font and, and JDF, so I watched that episode. Um, I did introduce my sons to it. Um, they didn't really get into Battle Rangers, they're more into Marvel. So I did watch some of Samurai, but I haven't seen any of the new, the new series. I did see the new movie in 2017, I really enjoyed it. Billy was definitely my favorite character. I just really loved him. I wish they could have gotten to the fighting a little bit sooner, but I, I enjoyed the movie. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> yeah. I also want to give your own slide. You also said, do you think that more power is more power to be a more of a female leader? Because you have rarely seen you know now that female leaders, you know, from Gen Power Rangers, from more power. Do you think that more power should be the more of a leader now? Yes, they need a female leader. What do you guys think? Yes, y'all better say yes, even if you pretend it. Yes, and then you would also ask if I, so I don't follow the series, but I don't know if you guys uh, read, anybody read comic books, Beyond the Grave? Yeah. We got two, we got two, give me three, 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 four, 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 got a four, got a five, I'm kidding. Um, they introduced my character in Beyond the Grid, and so um, I really loved that they brought my character back, and that, that really made me happy, so I did a full on, you know, arc and whatever in Beyond the Grid, so yay, yay Tanya. Now, did your sons take after acting at all? No. <laughs> we tried. We tried until my <laughs> my oldest is 19 and my youngest is 16. So my, I'm giving my age away again. 32 oh, well. now. Yes, 32 now. Um, my, so I, I remember <laughs> the last audition that I took my older son to. He was two and it was for Old Navy. It was like for a commercial or print job or something. And he woke up from his nap, and he was just not in his right state of mind. 
And um, I remember the the casting director would, wanted to ask questions of the, you know, just to see his personality. And he was holding his Spider-Man, and it was upside down like this. And I remember he was like this. And they said, so is that your Spider-Man? And he was like, no. And so she looks back at me like, okay, um, is it, what color is it? None of your business. I was like, that's a wrap. That's a wrap for us today. That was the last audition he went on. <laughs> no, my older son wants to be an MMA fighter, so pray for us all. And then, um, yeah, he had a fight, his first fight two weeks ago, and he won, so that just kind of encouraged him. It's like a yay, and then a like a oh. So, yay, oh. Um, and then my younger son has been writing and producing, and he raps, and I didn't even know he had that talent. And I was away um, doing a convention, and my husband had called me, and he was like, Babe, did you listen to Nyan's rap? And I was like, what? And I listened to it, and I was like, who is this child? It was amazing. It was really amazing. So yeah, they, they, they're both very artistic, but they just, they're not into acting. Yes. Man, man right here. Yep. Yes, I was just told about that Power Rangers film. I told them they need to bring me back. That's what I said to them. No, what I really felt like they, um, what would add to the greatness of Power Rangers is to bring in some of the original Rangers as cameos. I know that they had JDF and they had um, Kimberly, um, Amy Jo Johnson, in 2017, but wouldn't you have loved to see more of them as opposed to just the picture at the end, right? Huh? Yeah, I, I think that it would be, I mean, what do you guys think? That it would be better to have some, some cameos, right? Of some of the original, we could be, I was like, I could, I could have been Billy's mama. For real, right? Or one of the teachers, or I think it would be, it would really, really add to the movie if they bring some of the original Rangers back. Or you could be a mentor for the newer Rangers. Or I could be a mentor. This is true. This is very true. Back there in the blue. Uh, hey, um, Hi. I have uh, two questions for you. Today. Yes. Okay. Uh, one for on behalf of my friend here at Nation today. They were wondering if you remember the, the time when uh, Jason almost peed his suit on set. Almost peed his suit on yeah. set? That sounds like a normal thing that always happens, so I don't know if it was one time. <laughs> he was just a jokester, so even if he didn't have to almost pee his suit, he would, oh gosh, that's true. Like, he would just do silly things. Um, so that was just kind of like, I think, an ongoing thing. I don't know that that was anything one day or anything. I mean, is the suit hard to get in and out of? Yes, it is. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, it is. And then uh, my second question is, That I would consider? Yeah, like if someone was like, hey, we have a part for Wonder Woman or something. Is there a particular superhero you would love to play? As? Oh my gosh. When I was little, I was Wonder Woman. I'm not going to lie. I would run around my house in my underoos. Anybody remember underoos? Yeah. Okay. I would run around in my Wonder Woman underoos and I would have my long belt and I would whip my brother, my older brother Cornell, which he knows. He knows my brother too. Um, and I would pretend like that was my long lasso. Um, but I think that um, Gal does an amazing Wonder Woman, so I, I can't even take that away from her. I would love to be um, like a Marvel superhero though. I'm not sure who. Storm. Storm, I thought about Storm. Someone had asked me about Storm before, but yeah, I would, yeah, I would voice or even come back and, and be, that's great. Yeah, thank you for the question. <laughs> question. Okay. Um, so, going along the lines of Jason almost peeing his suit, um, the funniest moment that you can remember on set? The funniest moment that I can remember on set, um, I don't know. We had Bulk and Skull, Paul Schreier and Jason Narvey that played Bulk and Skull. We didn't film with them often, but uh, because they'd be filming in one one area and we'd be filming in another area. They were normally filming like with the stunt guys. 
um, they were always pulling pranks in the guest rooms and stuff like that. Like Catherine, who played the Pink Ranger, <laughs> they had taken all of her furniture out of her dressing room. She came in there and there was nothing. She was like, what the heck? Oh my gosh. <laughs> then we go on set and we film, we come back and she can't get into her dressing room because they had taken all the furniture out of everybody else's dressing room and stacked it into hers. So they would do, they would do silly things like that. Um, gosh, we, we had, I'd have to really think about that. Just really funny moments. I know when I first got on the show and I was wearing the African garb, and we're walking into, we're supposed to be walking into this new realm, this new layer or something like that. <laughs> and I walked into this new layer and I slipped and fell. And I ripped my, my African garb and all I could do was laugh because we were dying. Because it was, it was hilarious. That was, that was really fun, obviously. I think, I think that might be in some of the um, behind the scene like prank stuff at the, at the end of one of the episodes. But yeah, I can't remember specifically, but I know that we had some really funny moments on the show. Welcome everybody, thank you for coming in. This is our Power, Power Ranger hour, so there you go. Whoop whoop! <laughs> Question in the back, uh, in the white I think. Oh, nope. Oh, right here. It was new because we were doing a movie. We did the movie before we did the series. So I was like, I'm gonna do a feature film. <laughs> Woohoo! So I was really excited about that. Um, and then we also took six weeks of fight training. Like all of the guys are martial artists. They're phenomenal martial artists. Kat and I, we came in as dancers and so they wanted us to learn fight, you know, stunt fighting. Because if you guys didn't know, when we filmed Zio, and it actually, the, the series, whenever you saw us in the full helmet and the full outfit, those were stunt guys. Um, and when I say guys, I mean guys, because even mine was a guy. It was a little Japanese man pretending to be a girl <laughs> who would stand like this. I was like, I don't even stand like that, but okay. That's cool. We're good. Um, so, um, yeah, it was, it was different because it was going to be a feature film, and it was my very first feature film, so I was so enthusiastic about it. Um, but the way that we filmed it was very similar to the hours that we worked at on the television series. So that was very similar. It's just that we filmed in different locations. And one of we did shoot um, the baseball scene in Oakland. Um, and my parents got a chance to be uh, background. It was so fun. It was cute. I was like, that's my parents right there. Anyway, um, so yeah, it was fun. It was a, it was a, a great experience. Thank you for your question. So I stopped doing my nonprofit because I had hired individuals to be there because I couldn't be there and I didn't like the way that it was being run. How many of you know that when you have your own business, you have to be there? Um, yeah. And so because I couldn't be there and I was traveling a lot, I, I ended up stopping that. But I still, I still work with different charities. Um, but my nonprofit, I no longer have anymore. But thank you for asking. Uh, UCLA's uh, school f uh, school theater. What did it teach you? Um, obviously, got you a degree, but also, what did it teach you about acting that you can remember that you really uh, has took you know into the Power Rangers series and everything else? Um, it helped me with my improv, my improvisation. Um, I did a lot of improv in college, and it's needed when you're going in for a commercial audition um, because sometimes they will throw a script at you and. Sometimes, just you know, just the other day, I had learned something for uh, a television series, and then I get there, and they completely changed. Uh, I had one page of dialogue. I go there, they completely changed everything and added three more pages. So you have to be like on on point and just be able to adapt. So that really helped me, helped me there. I did a lot of uh, theater performances there, but I also did theater at Edison High School. Um, and I also was a part of the summer program that they used to have. Um, so I did a lot of performing there too. But I would say UCLA probably prepared me the most in, in improv. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. I've been 
back a couple of times, and actually I get to go back to my alma mater on Monday, and I get to speak with um, the drama students at Edison High School. You how's anybody go to Edison here? Anyone? Whoop, whoop, e-house? That's what we used to call Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'll be singing, you are so cute, little one. Um, so I'll be going to Edison, Edison on Monday, um, and I'll get to, a chance to speak with the students there. Um, I did come back, not last year, but I think the, the year before that and the year before that, and I also um, had a, spoke with, with about 3,000 kids at Delta, and it was from all of the high schools. I did that, did that twice. I'm always open to do whatever I can, to help wherever I can, because, you know, people helped me. I, I need to make sure that I'm available to help other people as well. So thank you for that question. Yeah. Is there something about the Edison drama program that, that keeps bringing you back, or, or the students that you see there, do you, do you go, you know what, that kind of reminds me of me, or that one you know, reminds me of the one that you know picked on me, or whatever, you know? Well, I've never, I haven't been back to Edison. Okay. Um, this will be the first time that I will be speaking at um, my drama department, but I think it's gonna be surreal because it was that very school where I remember standing on the stage preparing for my audition to get into UCLA, and Sandra Castanon was my was my um, acting teacher at the time, and she really, really helped me prepare for my audition. My audition was in San Francisco um, for UCLA because they had you know different different areas that you'd have to go to in order to to audition. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. Although I heard that it's like a university campus now, they really yeah. like redid everything. That's amazing because when I was there, it was not, not like that at all. <laughs> well, perfect. Let's give a hand for uh, Nakia. Uh, we will have Austin and